Good morning, Kate. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I'm really looking forward to this class. <laughs> I painted uh, two black and white acrylics so I can practice. <laughs> so. awesome. Yeah, they're fun, aren't they? Yeah, they are actually. It's nice how quickly you can go back and forth and keep figuring stuff out. Well, I'm we'll putting see. references in little plastic envelopes there. Well, I found soft edges to be harder with acrylic because it doesn't move and blend quite the same. Right. Yeah, I think it's more useful for the um, lying in of the big shapes and the big values and the big design. Uh -huh. And then with the oils, we'll come across and uh, do soft edges. But yeah, I did a pretty big one yesterday, black and white, and um, you can kind of see right back there under, behind the camera. Uh -huh. Trying to get soft edges with that guy was tough for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so are you gonna start from a purely black and white one today or are you gonna start where you left off last week? So both. Um, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, um, Cause we do have a number, I think we have three acrylic painters and so we were talking about glazing with acrylics. So oh. I did a bunch of research on that and I'll talk about that during class and um, show, show kind of the ideas I've come up with. We'll see how they work because I haven't even tried it yet. So we'll be experimenting together as always and uh, should be fun. All right, people are starting to show up here. We got about five more minutes. Oh. But yeah, beautiful work. Everybody's posting on the Facebook page. I'm really looking forward to going through that really quickly and uh, talking about that because I didn't put a slideshow together because we did it last week. Um, this will give us a little more time to look at our own work, which I think will be useful because we're right in the middle of class. So, All right, we'll see. Maybe it'll be a small group today. We got about four emails of people that weren't able to make it for different reasons. Gail, you may want to wipe your uh, lens. It's pretty blurry for some reason. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to ask, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, how long are these videos going to be available to us to uh, watch? At least through the summer. Okay. Yeah, because they are so big, um, you know, three to four hours long. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure Facebook will let me just keep putting them up indefinitely without me uh, doing something about it. Contributing. So <laughs> keep them through the summer or until they just ask me to start taking them down or editing them or whatever. Um, I keep thinking I'll go back and edit them so we don't have like the 15 minutes before and all the long breaks and stuff, but I just don't have the time to do all that. That's really time consuming, I know. Yeah, editing is not my forte when it comes to video stuff. Can it's you mute? Better. Can you can you stop the camera during those periods of time? I, I was in a meeting I, yesterday that and people were talking about how to do that. So oh. you might ask Nancy or you might ask one of the people at OSA and see because sure. there is a way to do that. And you just stop the camera for that yeah, period I, and it automatically edits. Stop video, but then it uh, just starts a whole new video and I'd have to upload more of them and I don't know how to stitch them. Okay, well, there's a way to do it. Okay, okay. I did find that out yesterday. <laughs> Are you really thinking about having a class this summer? Yeah, I'm looking, um, trying to figure out a time that works with a four week class. I've got four trips um, lined up and trying to see, it's always, I'll be coming home on Tuesdays on a couple of them so then I can still teach Wednesday, but it's not the best for me as far as preparation and everything. If I come home Tuesday night and then just start teaching Wednesday morning, I like to have 
you know, the, the Tuesday night before to kind of at least get my mind right and uh, decide on the agenda and everything else. Um, so yeah, I'm looking for four weeks to go together. And if not, it may be like three weeks a break and then one more week, which is always nice because that gives people time, to, you know, because we can do a longer, more final painting towards the end. And so that does work pretty well. Um, so what yeah. would that class be titled? <sighs> Mike's awesome class with his awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they can all be. Yeah, I don't know. We need to, that, that's something we get to talk about today because, um, yeah, it's kind of I can do whatever you guys would like if you guys would like kind of a refresher of everything, or we can work on you know two projects or whatever. Um, yeah, we can decide what we want for a four week class again. I never teach in the summer, um, I've always taken it off, but I have a uh, very independent 16 year old who uh can drive and probably uh i'll probably have a little more free time <laughs> um and she's also got a job and uh yeah and wednesdays seem to work because we seem to be gone most all weekends for art shows and camping and different things so wednesdays could work so yeah i look forward to having that discussion and seeing what you guys think um and then yeah we can decide too like we could almost keep going if i have enough students um almost like early June, I think, but then we'd have to take a one week break. I've got a trip to Chicago in there somewhere. So anyways, um, I just saw a new student, Eva. Is it Eva or Eva? Um, it could be either. <laughs> could be either. either. Eva. Eva? Mm -hmm. All right, great. Well, welcome to the class. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to be joining you. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. I learn a lot. I love your artwork. Oh, thank you. Were you able to watch the last video that I sent the link to? You know what? I did watch it, um, and uh, I wasn't able to paint. Um, no, that's okay. Mother's Day at the house. I had a lot of preparation. Yeah, I'm sure but you're not alone in that. Very, Don't worry. It's very informative. Great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yeah, because today's class is basically part two yes. of that, where we'll be continuing on on uh, black and white that I painted. And then um, then the one that I glazed in with the initial colors will be working on that. So it's fine that you uh, didn't get started. That's not a problem. And I'm sure, again, you're not alone. Um, this class is definitely self-paced. And hey, Susan, I thought you weren't going to make it. Um, Anyways, it's very self-paced, and that's the great thing about these videos. A lot of the students, um, I think only about two or three of the students I see painting during the class. Most students just kind of watch, ask questions, um, heckle, and uh, then um, they, then when they go to paint, they can re-watch the video, which is really useful because you can fast forward through these boring parts where I'm just talking or you can, you know, rewatch sections. Um, so it's really great. I, again, told the students this a hundred times, all of last year, I just didn't teach because I was like, oh, Zoom, that sounds horrible. I would hate to teach on Zoom. But now I, I, I really, really like it. And I see how useful it is for everybody. And um, anyways, and I'm having a lot of fun and I love painting in my studio. So and what I found interesting um, was that I didn't know you could you could apply oil paint over acrylic. I had no idea. And I have taken acrylic classes and I do watercolor. I'm very new to oil, so I'm excited actually because some of my bombs in um, acrylic I might experiment with. Perfect. And I'm excited to do that. Yeah, and the truth is I started off as an acrylic painter back in college a little for just a little while. Um, and I was in illustration. I did, you know, some children's book stuff and uh, promotions and things like that for a while. So if the projects had a deadline, I would definitely work, you know, a short deadline. I would work in acrylics. Um, I never really, really loved acrylics. They have kind of a, a slightly more plastic feel to them for me. There's just something in the touch. I don't know what it is. And, um, but now going back 
and my daughter paints mostly in acrylic. So we have a lot of acrylic paint laying around the studio here. My daughter and I share this studio. Um, and uh, it has been so fun. And I think I talked about it last week's class, but I talk about it a lot for me and how my brain works. And again, I just try to present tools. They're all just ways of working. And then it's up to you to take them, leave them, expand on them, and just see what works for you. We're all so different. We're all going to come at it differently. We're all going to find different ways that work. But by doing it with the acrylics here, I'm able to break it up and show how my brain is thinking. Even if I'm truly, most of the time when I paint, I go straight to color. You know, I'm doing all of the different steps at the same time, but that's because I've been painting for, you know, 20 years, nearly daily. Um, my, you know, I can do it, but when I'm breaking it down and showing it, I think it's so much more useful to say, in the beginning, <laughs> uh, I am thinking about big shapes, uh, strong values, design, design, design. And then I go to color. Then I start thinking about edges and brushwork. But in truth, you know, if you guys weren't here and I was in my studio by myself, very likely I would be doing all of that all at the same time. But I'm still thinking of it in that order of priority. Does that make sense to everybody? So design and composition is the big one. That's 70% of your painting. If you try to skip that, if you try to, if you start thinking it's the boring part, I just wanna to get to the color, you're setting yourself up for heartache. You can definitely get lucky, but a lot of the time you're gonna get yourself in trouble and one thing I'm constantly reminding myself is there's no painting your way out of bad design. Um, you just, you know, it may be a beautifully colorful painting, but it, you're, it's not going to be all that it could be. Design, composition, huge. And then, of course, colors is what, you know, especially if you're trying to sell your paintings or give them away as gifts, colors are what get all the credit. So I like to say values do all the work colors get all the credit. Um, so I think of my values in line with my design and composition. And then my colors, which we'll be working on today in the second painting. And, and brushwork and edges, they kind of come as I'm applying the color. So the next two weeks of class, are, I'm very excited about and I'm hoping you guys are excited about. And some of you, I don't see you in here here today are going to be naturals. There's some of you that are just born uh, uh, impressionist painters. You can just tell by how you like to apply the paint and everything else, and that's fantastic. So we're going to be going to impressionism for the next two weeks after today. Um, and that we are going to be working on really getting expressive, fun brushwork. I was able to look through my old reference photos that I took um, in San Francisco at a Monet show. And I just took a whole bunch of close-ups of like kind of the boring corners of some of his work, just to show you how beautiful and abstract and how nothing, like they just beautiful abstract color fields. And it's gonna be so fun to just kind of let loose. My big goal is to have you guys squeeze out some darn paint though. I know a lot of you guys are pretty stingy um, you're going to want to put some paint on your palette. And I'm, I mean quite a lot because I want, I want there to be some shovelfuls of paint on some of your painting. Not the whole thing. It doesn't have to be all like that. If you look at Monet's work closely, he's you know known as this thick, luscious brushwork. But truthfully, a lot of his paint is fairly transparent and thin and washy. And then he has these beautiful, thick areas that really grab our attention and uh, bring us into the painting. So anyways, I'm really looking forward to that, but I'm also looking forward to today and uh, building up on what we were working on last week. Um, Michael, yeah. um, are the Hudson River painters considered luminists? Yeah, in my book, um, I think they're tonalist, luminist. I mean, the tonalists truthfully are an offshoot. They came after the Hudson Valley, Hudson River uh, painters. But 
that's just the thing, right? I, I, most of these things don't get named until after, you know, it comes up to uh, gallery to name them later or collectors or um, yeah, anybody. So, you know, most of these people don't think of it like that. And I like, you know, you really notice that one flows into the next, flows into the next, flows into the next thing. And so, you know, so many of the paintings that I've shown you in the last couple of weeks, you could say easily, no, that's a luminous, no, that's a tonalist, no, that's a, you know, Hudson Valley or Hudson River School. And yeah, true. <laughs> and most painters are lots of things. Um, you know, if I think if I had to give my work a title, I couldn't say I'm a tonalist or an impressionist or a realist. I would have to say I'm a tonalist a luminist with impressionistic leanings or something like that. I don't know. I leave that up to you guys or maybe someday I'll be in a gallery or museum where they'll you will. have to think of a title, um, figuring that out for me. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's what's so great is we've got all, uh, you know, so much history of painters to look back at and appreciate and grab a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, you know, again, I told you guys that one of my biggest influences growing up was Maxfield Parrish, who did these very thin, transparent washes um, or glazes. And his paintings just were so glowy and magical looking. And I just loved them as a little kid. Um, you know, my parents probably had a book or two of his laying around and um, I'm still learning because there's not much written on how he did what he did. So I'm still learning. Um, OSA actually has a book that has a um, half done painting, which is one of the few I've ever seen of his paintings half finished. And um, I study that. I pull that book off the shelf at Oregon Society of Artists and we'll just look at it and try to see what he was doing. And that is partly what took me back to acrylic painting and working in values like I'm doing. Um, so I grabbed a little bit of Maxfield Parrish. I also fell in love with California Impressionism at the end of college. So I love, you know, you, you, you want to look at it and figure out what is it that I love about this style? What draws me in? And just take that aspect. If you love tonalism because of the muted colors, but you don't like the brushwork or you don't like the subject matter, just take the muted colors. If you like impressionism, you know, because of the thick paint, but again, not the subject matter, just take what you like from each thing and that's how you're gonna develop your own style. And it takes time and it'll be ever evolving and always changing, but that's the fun. We just get to take a little bit of Maxfield Parrish, a little bit of Monet with a little bit of whatever craziness makes Mike Orwick, squeeze them together, shake up the bag, and you end up with your style, um, you know, and the longer you paint, the more artists you'll find, the more artists you find, the more influences you have, and the more idiosyncratic your work becomes. So that's what I truly believe, um, that, you know, just take what you like, leave the rest. Take what works, leave the rest. So anyways, that's why I'm never afraid that I'm going to create a whole bunch of micro- Michael, uh, can I just, I don't know if your um, internet connection is very good. You keep kind of zoning out, <laughs> slowing down, the speech uh -oh. slow, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have uh -oh. problems. Yeah, I'm connected to my highest, I connected don't have to my fastest. I not hearing you. Not at mm. all. That <clears throat> Am I back? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, my am hooked into our strongest. Yeah, let me know if I'm dropping out and I'll try to uh, repeat it a little bit. I apologize for that. Um, anyways. Grab, grab pieces from all the artwork you like, figuring out, delving deep, looking into it and deciding what is it that draws me to this, what draws me to that. 
And that's really where you will learn so much about your own art. Um, my wife and I used to play a game when we were newlyweds and definitely weren't buying original artwork when we go into galleries because <laughs> we were waiters and didn't have a lot of money. And um, we would go into the gallery or museum or wherever and play a game where we would each pick our favorite painting. If we could take any painting out of the museum or gallery, which one would it be? And then at the end of our visit, we would share with each other which one was your favorite, which one was mine. And then we would discuss it. Like, why, what was it about that painting? Like I'd ask my wife, you know, was it because it had peaches in it, love peaches, or was it because of the design, the colors, the brush strokes, the, you know, the style, what was it that you liked so much? And then I would say that, and I learned so much. You blanked out just then what I liked in paintings, what I didn't like in paintings. Anyways, um, yeah, it was a, a great way for me to develop kind of my aesthetic as an artist. All right, one quick note on the uh, acrylic underpaintings. Um, I have done a bunch more research just to make sure I wasn't leading everybody astray and uh, have everybody's paintings fall off here in a couple weeks. Um, it is completely fine to paint oils over acrylic paintings. So, yay. <laughs> At least um, acrylics are a little over 30 years old, I think, uh, maybe older now. And people have been painting oils over the top of them, and there's been very little issue with that. The one thing I did read is you may want to lean towards more matte acrylics versus the really shiny um, uh, acrylics. Um, most acrylics are, are kind of on the matte side anyways. Um, I have stuff called, uh, what is it, with shiny glaze or oh, high gloss glaze for acrylics. Um, I was thinking I might uh, do some glazing with that, but by reading more, I think that that's not my best bet. So what I do have is matte medium, which uh, last week I compared to hodgepodge. Um, a lot of people can use it for decoupaging and different things. It's almost like a glue. So what I'm going to do is add 25% water to the matte medium. And I'm going to paint at, and then I'm going to add the color uh, acrylic paint to that. And I'm going to glaze with that. You guys are going to watch. Uh oh, it's freezing again. Hmm. Was I freezing there for a little bit? Yes. Ah, man. Uh, 25%. It says it's full. Like I've got full Wi-Fi. Hmm. All right. So anyways, I'm going to be using matte medium. Jeez. With water. With 25% water. And I'm going to mix in my acrylic color with that. It will... Um, the problem with matte medium is it goes on milky. It dries clear. So that makes me a little bit nervous because I won't be able to judge it as quickly as I would if I was using a gloss medium. Is someone else in your house online or a lot going online? Yeah, no sound and frozen here. Me too. Hi, Donna. <laughs> Looking good, Gail. Hi. <laughs> Hi, sister. Hi, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's um, he's trying to figure out what's wrong. I'm sure he is. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking the same thing. Maybe something must be jamming him up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Must be. 
Yeah. This is the best time for my sister and I to see each other. She <laughs> lives in Palm <laughs> Desert and I live in Portland. <laughs> so, <laughs> hope you all don't mind that we greet each other. Not at all. <laughs> Oh dear. We could be on the phone. We could do other things, which we of course do, but <laughs> so I found a whole bunch of these little brushes at Ace Hardware. Oh good. 99 cents, everybody. Yeah, I I, I use them, but they are some of them are really bad. They just shed from yeah. the get-go. Yeah, they're <laughs> bad. You can stuff out. Yeah. And then you miss one, and there's no way to get it out, especially in acrylic. Oh, well, just add, add, add a lot of texture over it. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you right now, as long as um, he's gone, I, I will tell him shortly. We were in a meeting at Oregon Society of Artists yesterday, and what we're going to try to do um, with classes henceforth is do them as hybrids so that it, there will be, you can come into the building if you wish to, or you can take mm -hmm. them online if you wish to, or if you don't live in Portland. So I think that um, a, lot of, a lot of groups are trying to do the same thing, but hopefully we'll be able to do it shortly. And I think that'll really be a plus for everybody. Oh, well, that's fantastic. That good if you come out of COVID. Yeah, as we come out and then, and then perhaps into the future because uh, how many of you are from across the country? I, I was really wondering that yesterday. Jan is, my sister is, and somebody is from New York, and I don't know who. Oh. <clears throat> well, I just two hours from Portland having to drive in from Oregon City. Okay. All the, okay. You know, all the traffic and everything else, uh -huh. you know, because I'm getting older. That's not as easy. And the other thing Michael told us to begin with, with the shop brushes, as soon as you get them, if you put some just regular Elmer's glue right along the base on both sides oh. and let it kind of sink in and dry, then you like don't right use the bristles as much. Good idea. Like Good. right here? Just in the yes. ferrule? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right next to the ferrule. Good idea. Yeah. Going back to the hybrid, I like the idea um, also because you could like go to some classes in person and yeah other times because i live in portland you know and i don't always want to schlep all my stuff over to osa but on exactly. the other hand i do like having in-person mm -hmm. classes sometimes so well i do too because i think this has been more than i ever cause this is the first time i've ever done an, an online class and i think it's been fabulous but I do regret not having somebody stand there and say, oh my God, Gail, maybe, <laughs> maybe you should do this. Right. So right. Uh, I, I think so too. I think it's a really good possibility and I think it'll be great. I, great. I think it's great. This is the first art class, uh, first group of art classes I've been able to take ever because I just cannot stand uh, or, or for hours. I, I just can't do more than an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. Mm -hmm. in a class and oh, so this yeah. has been I just agree. the best thing for me i i finally able to take some classes from a good artist you know, I know. well <laughs> i wonder though michael had said that that he i think or what if the teacher wants to stay working from home well that and that's a possibility too yeah. we'll still do virtual classes just uh all together but hybrid will be the possibility for all the instructors and i think most of them are, are liking the possibility at this point. We have at OSA, we have about 20 instructors in varieties of different kinds of things. And we're also gonna start Jeez. doing photography. So um, the, there, there'll be lots of options, I think as time goes on. So, and everybody's pretty interested in going any which direction that provides things to the communities. Um, and a lot of, lot of uh, art schools are doing exactly that right now. So anyway. I, I, I'm, I'm the president of OSA, so. <laughs> that's oh, why I could, <laughs> why I could go a little bit. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> I've been so grateful to be able to take this uh, online. So thank you so much. I, I think it's been great too. And I had to do it because I have never taken one and people kept saying, oh, they're fabulous. They're fabulous. Okay, I'll take one and find out. And I have loved it too. So anyway, 
and Susan and Donna and I are both in an oil class um, uh, on Saturday mornings. So um, that's, and Michael taught us just one day as a substitute and uh, we all loved him so much that we decided we had to do this class. So anyway, we all come from all kinds of different places. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm talking too much. I also Sorry. Work. I want to say that I've been, I took a class also with Joanne Mel, several of them online over the oh, last good. year. And I've been so impressed with how much effort all of these instructors have put into learning mm -hmm. how to teach online. They, they, mm -hmm. I mean, just hats off to them. I, I'm a former professor. I, I know this, it takes a lot of work to do what they're doing. And all of them invested in it. So, uh, you know, kudos to to OSA and to their instructors. Well, yeah, absolutely. We, we have had a lot of grants lately, fortunately, during the COVID period of time. Um, so we have been able to completely remodel our lower level in the building. Uh, and if you're in Portland, you may, you may have seen it, but from other areas, we now have three new full classrooms downstairs that, that will be able to be occupied. So, um, but people are interested in, in being online. So it's a very difficult thing. How do we get people back in the building or do we just cater to virtual? I, I don't know, it's a, very, it's a very amorphous place right now. Yeah. Oh. Cheryl, can you hear me? Can yeah. anybody hear me? Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Um, I I would not be able to take the class if I had to go to the building. Uh huh. It's just too far. Yeah. Good to know. I, mm -hmm. I think yeah. that a lot of people are feeling that way. So good. Good. This feedback is great. Well, I'm sorry that we have lost our instructor, but this is yeah. very very good for me and helpful <laughs> helpful to OSA. So thank you. Um, <laughs> This is Sherry, um, and I just wanted to put a vote in for the hybrid because I would love to be able to um, go to an in-person class and get that immediate feedback and not feel like there's um, so much distance between me and the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael's back. <laughs> Let's hope. Yeah, sorry, I had to go restart my router and tell my daughter not to watch videos. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Let's hope. Yeah. Can, I don't... Everybody, can everybody please? We'll all mute. Yeah, we all need to mute now. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for filling in there so nicely. Um, I apologize. And I'll just kind of keep trying to watch when everybody freezes. I know there's an. Issue going on. Oh, like it's still freezing. They're doing a bunch of construction on my road, so I'm hoping nothing happened. Can you guys hear me at all? Yes. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Okay, so I won't do any swearing every time I this thing starts freezing. Okay. Um, so did you guys catch what I said about the map medium and how I'm planning to do that? So that will be the experiment for today that we'll all get to uh, either learn what to do or what not to do. Um, and then I will quickly go over to the painting that we glazed into last week that we did with the Indian yellow and I will be bringing in color and I'm going to actually do a big transition on that. I'm going to very much cool that painting down. It has very much of a sunset feel right now. We're going to kind of change it to a purpley blue uh, and a little more pink, more of a sunrise feeling. So you'll get to see See how I can go over and cover. Still freezing up. Is it still freezing? You're back. Man, I wonder if I just need to restart my computer really quick. What about the server? Did you check the server? Yeah, that's what I do. You mean like the Wi Fi router? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I ran downstairs and unplugged and ran around the house saying, hey guys, I'm getting, please don't use unnecessary Wi-Fi. Yeah, like I was saying, they're doing a lot of construction, so I'm hoping nothing is happening that way in our neighborhood. And they're tearing up all the sidewalks and stuff, so. Um, 
Let's give it one more shot. If it freezes up really badly, I am going to restart my computer. But let's do a quick screen share and go and look at what you guys did this week. Because again, I didn't have uh, a slideshow. So we're going to do screen share. And oh, I need to pin myself, right? All right. Is everybody seeing the Facebook page? Great. Yes. You guys have been busy, busy, busy. So much beautiful work. And it's been fun seeing everybody playing and experimenting with the black and whites. Um, I did go ahead and post a link about um, <coughs> using oils over, over acrylics that I found from Golden Paint. But for some reason, Facebook is holding it. They're reviewing it before they let me post it for whatever reason. Um, Let's do a quick line down here. Let's go. Is Michelle here today? Yes. You? Yeah. Look at that. That is so fun. All right. Let's click in here. And let's go. So here's Michelle's reference. Very nice. Um, look at that nice light coming through. I uh, love pictures like that where you're kind of going down into a lit path. In fact, the painting I was working on yesterday is very uh, theme wise similar. And then I Michelle. forgot to set I forgot to set my horizon line. So it's halfway. <laughs> That's all right. Still, I, that is really cool. Look, the black and white and I love how abstract this top left corner is. You really were just looking at values, shapes. You weren't trying to say leaf, 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 even though there seems to be quite a lot of detail, you know, in little spaces, it really works well. Um, I think that that's one of the biggest keys with these black and white and acrylic painting underpaintings is that you can go back and forth. You can lighten, you can darken, you can, you know, go back and forth so quickly and keep modulating everything. So anyways, even though your horizon lines at the halfway, you know, not a big deal. Um, it doesn't look too, too balanced. I mean, it kind of does, but, um, and it's funny because yeah, your ref reference, it's way down here, but um, um, now you know, and, and then you went in and it looks like you glazed some reds and some blues and some yellows. Is that correct? Yes. Very cool. It looks really nice. I mean, that's a great beginning of a painting right there. I mean, you got so far, and I imagine that was pretty quick turnaround time. Yeah, last night much... till 2 a.m. What's that? Last night till 2 a.m. Okay, well, depending on when you started. If you started at 1 a.m., great. That was a very quick turnaround. If you started at... Probably, probably about five, six hours. Okay. So yeah, you can decide if this is an efficient way to paint or, you know, going forward, if this is something you want to go back to, or would it have been better just to kind of jump in and get everything going at the same time. But I really like where it's going. I like the colors. I think you're going to have a lot of fun bringing in, you know, opaque and thicker paint on top and building this up with your oil paints. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for you. What are your thoughts on it so far? Yeah, I'm uh, like, I'm not sure the base of the foreground tree, like uh, if I should try to bring in more of the, if I should try to really do it like what the reference photo shows or do something else. Yeah, with the um, kind of more speckling, it looks like there's leaves on the ground. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and, and if I should go try to correct the horizon line and I don't know, I, um, yeah, I don't know how far to go with it. I would use this as an experiment. I, I wouldn't go back. I, let's just go forward. And then if you want to, you know, the next one will be faster. You, you know, we learn a lot from our mistakes if we allow ourselves to. Um, I definitely think that a lot, you know, even if we're kind of unhappy with different aspects of our painting, as long as we allow them ourselves to take in what we learn from the mistakes or, you know, the things that we wish we hadn't done. Um, just remember that every painting is for the next painting and, you know, going towards that. So you're learning, you're playing, you're experimenting, 
And then, you know, after you figure out some of this stuff and decide what you like, what you don't like about it, then going forward, you're going to have all these new interesting ways of thinking and tools to use. So I wouldn't go backwards with this one because, I mean, you've already got it glazed in with oil, so you can't go back in with acrylics anyway. Am I right? Those are oils on top? Correct. Yeah, so you can't go back to your acrylics any longer. Once you get your oils on, you're done with your acrylics, okay? Oils over acrylics are fine. Acrylics over oils are a big no-no. Um, yeah, I think, I, I like it. I think it's off to a good start. I think, you know, I like some of the modulations you took where you opened up more sky, you have a little more light. Um, one thing you can do down here in the dark shadowy tree area where the base connects to the ground is by simply changing some of the color and temperature. You can keep them really quite dark in there, but let's say it's more bluey green on the bottom and more, you know, whatever colored, warmer darks up in the tree base or something like that. Um, that will differentiate. We'll learn more about that when we look into impressionist painting. Um, Cause right now, again, it's all about values and structure. Whereas a lot of the impressionists, it's very interesting where they'll look really dynamic and strong, but when you turn them into black and white, a lot of the things get lost because they are creating their edges, not so much with values, they are creating their edges with color contrast and so, and temperature contrast. So that'll be uh, interesting for you to see going forward. So yeah. Thank Anybody you. else want to say anything about Michelle's uh, good start here? All right, and Kathleen, very, very nice. Look at that atmosphere and depth. This is a beautiful moody painting. It makes it, I mean, it works as a black and white already. Really nice. Um, are you on here, Kate? Yep. I am. All right, tell us a little bit about your painting here. It's a tree and, and it was foggy and I don't think I gave uh, the reference, did I, the reference photo, but uh, I, I added something because I talked to Denise and she thought I needed to have a little bit more of the, um, you know, reflection of the tree in the foreground water. Mm, so, yeah, good idea. Yeah. This is an older photo, so I, I changed it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think you're off to a really nice start. It's got, I mean, it's got so much atmosphere. It's kind of realism and half kind of what we're doing now with the luminism. So I'm curious where you'll take it. Have you glazed into it at all yet? Not a bit. I was afraid to. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But nice start. Beautiful. All right. There's that one. All right. Susan's picture of the Smoky Mountains. All right, so Susan's been doing these big grand vistas lately, very nice. Um, yeah, I love the background and what you have going on here. Um, and then Susan, were you going to, you said something about you wanna make it more smoky. Yeah, because actually the original picture is uh, very smoky. And then one uh, glazing, but the paint is uh, wet. I'm uh, using all, all no uh, acrylic, uh, only using oil. Okay, great. So yeah, you just have to wait for a little longer for the drying between layers and everything else. Um, I find this ridge of red a tiny bit distracting. Um, I don't quite understand stand what it's doing why it's just kind of one line it's not you know coming forward or going back or whatever um so are we kind of on the edge of a cliff looking down are we way up high looking down onto the mountains is that what's yes, going on yes yes so uh, the red uh front of the red actually is the uh the sunshine the lights very beautiful and the see-through but i couldn't find the color Mm. how to make it so that's uh it's like opaque actually it's very uh the red like a crystal it's very beautiful so maybe i should uh, uh upload the original picture but I've, 
I think if not see the original picture, maybe this is okay. But when you see the original picture, it's uh, sad. The middle, uh, the middle ground actually should be more soft, the edges. But I made a little hard. Too, too late, I want coming down to, to make it again and upload again. Then I thought, okay, next time, next time. Yeah. Can you hear me, Michael? Oh, oh. Hello, Susan. Yeah, yeah. Can I, I think uh, can Michael can hear me or no? I think we lost him again. <laughs> yeah. The original picture is very beautiful. When I, I drove, do uh, you have the house. Climbs do, you have the, do you have the picture nearby? Uh, okay, I will. My, yes, the picture. The, the picture. Oh, okay, I tried to show you. Hmm. Uh, it's not my beautiful picture. All right, sorry everybody. Yeah, it disconnected completely. Last thing I heard was Susan talking about the colors. Do you guys mind? You guys, please stay on and talk amongst yourselves. I hate to do this. This is embarrassing. I don't look, and the people see the picture. How can you can see the picture or something? You can see or no? Yeah. This is our original picture. Very cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful and especially the uh, the front lights, the red color, it's a uh, see through. It's very beautiful leaves. It's a uh, sunset. Okay, great. Yeah. Maybe so, I have to upload. <laughs> okay, so what I see in that is you're going to want to play your contrast up the darks in the bottoms of those kind of red grassy plants. Um, what also is happening in your photo is this pine tree on the left side here <laughs> going, is actually in front of those red grasses. Can you share the screen again? Uh, which one? My Michael? Oh, no. Okay, go ahead. Oh, the painting, yeah. Can you share it? Yeah. Yep. All right. Everybody see the Facebook page again? All right. Yes. Great. So, uh, Susan, what I noticed is that the shadows are stronger in your photo. And then this pine tree is actually in front of the grasses, oh. not behind it. So that's why you have this really strange shape right here where it goes up. You know, it's very um, almost kind of feels like a like a Chinese dragon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the tree is behind. The grass is, uh, is the uh, foreground. Okay. Um, but I, I think that it, it doesn't have this shape right here where it goes down so steeply. Yeah, 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 right. So that, that's kind of a, that's a, for some reason it's distracting. For one, it points right into the corner, which we try not to do too much if we don't have to. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then you, I think when you come in and glaze the reds into the mountains, it's gonna be beautiful. And then what I would do too is adding a little bit of white and purple or blue and white. I would probably uh, add a little bit of cool mist into some of these mountains. We'll push them back a little bit. Is this a line of dark pine trees right here above the red plant? It's a, actually, it's very, very deep. It's a, it's a deep, always black. I even cannot recognize it in my original one. Um, Cannot recognize it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a very deep. I think it's pine trees. Yeah. Or shadow. Um, so anyways. Not I shadow, would, it's, a, it's a tree, it's a tree. It's yeah, a tree. because the photo, um, if you get the light in your photo, it's gonna make the darks darker. So I would probably make up some of that. I don't just, I, I, I don't like a big black area right in the yeah, middle. That's a, so you're gonna have to make that up a little bit. And you can cool that down just a touch um, and that'll play the reds off really nicely. 
But anyways, yeah, nice job, nice shapes. I would fix the left corner um, and do something with the darks in the middle. And then when you come in and glaze with the reds and everything else on the top, it's gonna be beautiful. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Barbara, are you on today? I can't remember if you were able to make it. Barbara, are you on today? All right, well, just quickly, I love the dynamic design in this. Really interesting. Barbara um, uh, lives near some vineyards. Um, I think she lives on a alpaca farm and near some vineyards. So I imagine it's a very beautiful area where she lives. And um, I think in the last class, she did a vineyard or two. And so it's fun to see this time she's walked into the vineyard and gets this real three dimensional, very dynamic design. Um, and I'm curious to see where this goes. I do see a lot of shine. If you add too much liquid or uh, galkid into your paints, they can become a little too shiny and it's gonna be hard to build those layers up because as soon as you get really strong shine, the paints don't wanna stick. All right, Lisa, are you on today? I think Lisa and I talked a little bit about this. Lisa, are you here? Um, this is her tonalist painting. And we talked about the fact that it's very crisp edge um, and she, uh, mentioned that it was, you know, she's going to start learning about the um, structure of trees. These look very nice and pruned, um, very trimmed, like they would be in a nice garden versus being very wild. And uh, so anyways, just depends on what you're after. Um, I do that a lot where I come in and all of a sudden I've uh, either bonsai or designed my trees to look like they belong in an English garden. And uh, just depends on what you're after. All right, Karen, are you on here? I thought I saw you earlier. Yep. All right, so this was That's an older so painting you did that you said and that you're kind of coming back to. Yeah, I, I uh, did it years ago in one class I took from you where you were trying to teach us about values and I got to the point where the black, the darks and the lights were blocked in, but I had no idea how to do detail. So. You must have had an amazing teacher. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's really nice. Uh, it's very, uh, yeah, it just has such a good feeling. And I love your kind of soft edges in this area, you know, letting things kind of go. And then you kept it crisp right along here. So our eyes. That is really beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> I thought it was a reference to um, killing, killing our babies, you know, our <laughs> artwork. So that's exactly what it was. I, I kept thinking about that phrase all week and then I dug this out and uh, yeah, I was thinking about the killing the babies comment. That's so kind of morbid. So. <laughs> Man, that is just incredible. I, I can almost see a flesh tone in there, but you didn't glaze it, right? Um, I played a little bit with it just because I was too tempted. So I took just a tiny, tiny bit of pink and kind of mixed it in with the gray. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Very, very nice. I too thought it was a reference to don't kill your baby, you know, or don't be afraid to kill your baby. I was going to say to the sister pair, I was so inspired by you guys. I was like, what a brilliant idea. I called my sister in Arkansas and she'll be taking another class with me through you guys. <laughs> That's great.
Karen, where are you? I'm just right here in Hillsboro. Oh, okay. <laughs> Surrounded by kids all over the place in the background. Hello. And where is your sister? Uh, where's your sister? Oh, she's in Arkansas. Okay. <laughs> oh, that would really be fun. Right? Because we never see each other. Well, we are on the phone constantly after this class and sharing our, our work back and forth. And so it has given us a bond that um, <laughs> has been surprising, I think. <laughs> Hopefully we get that too. Yeah, we text back and forth like our painting projects and stuff, but it'll be fun to do it in real time together. <laughs> to the sister in Palm, Palm Desert. Yes. I don't know your name. What, what did, I'm Jan. Jan. I'm Jan. Jan. Have you taken Mare's class in Palm Desert? Somehow, hmm? Mare, her name is Mare, she does a life drawing class. No, I've never taken life drawing. No? Uh -uh. Looks so familiar to me, and I go down to Palm Desert often. Hmm. With Do Emily. You to the Artist Council here? Mm, no. Down at Palm Desert? No. Desert, no. Okay. I just yeah. visit. But you look so familiar. I thought maybe you took that class because I take no. it with when okay. I go. And her name, the artist's name is Mare. I don't know what her last name is. And she does yeah. kind of a life drawing thing. Okay. But well, I guess, I, I'll look it up. Actually, it sounds good. Oh, it's pretty good. It's on a Saturday morning. Okay. She does kind of, she does into very colorful, interesting work. I wish I could remember her last name, maybe. but maybe next class I'll, I'll talk to my friend Emily and- And it wasn't in Palm Springs at the Desert Art Center? Uh, it is at, it is in Palm Springs actually. At the yeah. Desert Art Center, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, um, I, I know that name now, yeah. Let's see. Okay, I restarted my computer. I, again, I apologize everybody. <laughs> Just not not your day. I just see a, a screen that says Susan Zhang on it. I see you. I see you now. Who? Kate. <laughs> it seems whenever we talk, we get our picture shown. Oh, yeah. shoot. That's, that's so, isn't that fun? I noticed that um, we're, we're all trying to pull maybe a little bit of makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we don't fade into the... <laughs> I've got to I, go buy lipstick. I, that's one thing with a mask. Who puts lipstick on anymore? And I couldn't find any this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know if anyone else watching it back starts giggling at certain things. Yes. <laughs> I didn't bother with makeup. I just didn't do video. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see you anyway. Not today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's actually a setting on Zoom where you could um, have constant, instant lipstick. Really? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's, um, and there's also another one that's called Improve My Appearance that you could turn up and it just kind of gets rid of any wrinkles or... It's really fun. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
Well, poor Michael, this um, I'm sure isn't yeah. going as he's going to be, I believe. Is there a setting yeah. where you can add more wrinkles? No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you can do that with a paintbrush though. How do you go into it? How do you, how do you get um, it? Let me think. So if you go into the video icon on the bottom left, that little yeah. carrot, uh -huh. and then go to choose video filter. Oh, okay. And let me click on that. And then you go to, in the bottom right-hand corner, it says studio effects. Mm -hmm. And you click on that. And then there's all these different lip colors. And um, so you click on the color that you like, and then there's a bar where you could drag it over, you know, to a lot of lipstick or a little bit of lipstick. You could add a mustache and a beard. <laughs> um, and That's there's got one the eyebrows that I don't really get. So there's that. So you do that. And, um, and then it says apply to all future meetings on top. And then if you go back um, to the, that main page where it says virtual backgrounds and video filters, and then you click video filters. Oh wait, that's not gonna do it. Um, let's try virtual backgrounds. Um, nope. We should all do a mustache and a beard for when he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's fun to know. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm trying to find that. So the other one, the main menu, here it is. It's if you click on video, so you can kind of see um, it's settings on top and then general video, audio and so on. Click on video and then go down to my video and it says touch up my appearance and then you can turn it all the way up. We may never go back to class in person. <laughs> Did I miss something last week? Um, I looked up luminism online and was reading some things. And I watched this thing called a, a quick lesson or something. And she said that luminism is achieved by uh, playing warm against cool. And she went into this whole thing about, and I don't remember Michael saying that, but I thought maybe I zoned out. And so that's why I don't remember that. Did he say anything about playing warm against cool to get luminism? He did it blazing, really. Yeah, so can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to my iPhone. <laughs> uh, um, so I'll make everybody dizzy. So I'm gonna try to set that up. I think it should work and we will just not be looking at the computer anymore. We'll be doing the uh, setup. Um, it may take me one second to find my um, tripod that I can set up my iPhone on. So, I oh gosh, this is so crazy. But uh, anyways, I will find my tripod, get this set up, and um, we will just start painting. And hopefully this works because this connects to data or Wi-Fi, so it shouldn't drop anymore. Um, everybody okay with that? Getting seasick. Yes. Yeah. That'd be fine. All right. So stop watching me so you don't get seasick and give me one second. I found my tripod. Let me get it set up and we will just get to painting. And we're just going to pretend class is starting now. And you guys have had just a really nice chance to chat. <laughs> so I apologize one more time. But give me one second. And everybody may need to uh, pin my pin my um, picture so that it's the uh, main one. I'm not sure how to do it on my phone. I don't know what that means. Or how you do it? Uh, so you see the three right dots up in the picture in my uh, picture. Yeah. It should say pin. Yeah, I'm not finding the options to do it on my side here. 
don't see it either. Well, I have to click on, uh, I'm not using an iPad. I have to click on your, pic your picture twice and then say, it gives me an option to pin you. So <laughs> I don't know if that helps anybody else. Okay. Maybe. Double tap screen to pin video. Yep, that's what I did. All right, turn on some lights. And if everybody can remember to mute, that'd be great. I think if you right click on it, uh, other people, uh, if you right click on his main picture, that might also bring up the option for the pin. Okay, so maybe this video will be better on my iPhone than on my little camera that I've been using but I don't know about the sound. So hopefully sound is okay. Everybody can hear me pretty clearly. Yeah. Sounds fine. Sounds Great. good. All right. Well, maybe I should have done this at the beginning of the class and you should get a big, nice wide angle. Um, I don't know if I can zoom in. Nope. I can't zoom in with my phone, unfortunately. So it'll just be a matter of dragging the tripod towards the picture. Um, I was just going to do a quick show and tell of what I've been working on really fast. This is a commission that I um, did for a couple. I think I showed you guys last week in progress. It's got the frame, they're gonna come pick it up. Um, but this was a combination of all the different styles we're working on. And I did hear um, somebody, I think it was Kate asking about uh, luminism. And yeah, in this painting is kind of an example of some of the luminist techniques where you've got the warms and the cools. And if you even look into the rocks, you'll see a lot of warm and cool colors kind of right beside each other. So as the shapes kind of bend and go towards the shadows, um, they, get, they go from the yellows and the warms towards the pinks, then the purples and then the blues. And then within the sky, you have uh, warms and cools. And that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing in today's example. I gotta hold it down there. But this, um, by using those transparent layers, you can really see how the colors change as the light hits it in different ways. So that's one of my favorite things. Um, I really like when my paintings have different appearances under different light conditions. Um, just putting that aside. And then uh, this is the black and white I was working on yesterday. Um, and so this is a creek kind of flowing out of a little river and really glowing trees of the path and everything else. Um, so before class started, I was talking with uh, Kate and somebody else about soft edges with acrylics. It is not easy, but what you can see in the, uh, the trees and stuff is by simply creating a bunch of in-between values, so we've got kind of our lightest lights, our darkest darks. And then in between those, we've got all these different values of gray. So because it dries so quickly, I was forced to create the illusion of soft edges by just creating the in-between values. So they kind of go from the light towards the, you know, a little bit lighter towards the darks. Does that make sense? And then it was fun trying to create the illusion of ripply water with little dappled light and the light kind of coming through and hitting the rocks. So. Gorgeous. Thanks. It's going to be fun, I think, to paint. That's uh, from a scene in Lake Oswego. Setting that aside. And here are the different. Uh, glazing mediums that I was contemplating. So this is called gloss gel. Um, this is what I mix with the black to paint my edges of my paintings when they're finished. Um, see kind of the, the deep edge on this. So I mix a little bit of black with the gloss gel and it makes it so that it doesn't scratch as easy. It creates more of a crystalline surface. So I mix the gloss gel with black acrylic or with black gesso. 
to paint the edges. And then it's, if I just use black gesso, it scratches really easy and it even gets fingerprints and collects dust more readily. So I found that the gloss gel creates a very nice surface. So if I were just painting acrylics, I could use the gloss gel to uh, glaze and I think it would be fantastic. I still could do it. Um, I just think that the oil paints don't grab it as readily. I was even contemplating doing the gloss gel glazing into my water just to see and the matte medium into the grasses so we could do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, and then here we have uh, matte medium, which again is kind of like hodgepodge. I think I'm saying that right. Um, it's very thick and uh, very milky. And that's the one that I know that oil paints uh, definitely like and will paint. It's very porous um, and it will dry much more matte than the gloss gel. If you guys would like, um, I can experiment with both of those on this painting. I was even thinking it may be great to even mix like a 50-50 mix of the gloss gel and the matte medium to uh, glaze into this. So what would you guys like to see as an experiment with this? Especially different in your areas, Different areas, different mediums. Yeah, all okay. of them. Great. I like it. Let's let's mess this painting up properly. So I've got my little cup of water. I grabbed my 79 cent little acrylic paints here. Um, and I just thought those would be kind of nice under painting colors. So kind of the red in the skies and around the edges of the trees, the purple kind of into the trees and the tops and the blue. I may try to find a darker blue. This one's light. Um, let me see if I find a dark blue really quick and then I'm gonna mix up a glaze and see what happens. All right, found a darker blue so we'll use that one. I also just grabbed a little plastic plate. I have, I buy these by the, I don't know, a couple hundred at a time. And they just make nice little mixing areas for the acrylics. So I don't mess up my oil painting areas. So I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit of this paint if there's any in there. Uh, very little blue. All right. Pretty much just killed off the end of the blue there. Squeeze out some purple. and a little red. And the truth is the purple I probably don't need because the blue and the red should make a nice purple, possibly. I'm gonna just take my brush and reach in here to my matte medium is the one we'll start with. And I'm just gonna put some of that on the side here. I'm gonna dip that brush into my water and pull, drip some of that in about, I'm hoping for about 25% water. That'll make, I'm now mixing it down below here. Um, so I'm just mixing the water with the matte medium to make it a lot runnier. I'm gonna start with my red, just kind of pulled off a corner of it. And let's see, remember that the matte medium, oh, I was gonna, yeah. The matte medium is going to be a lot, uh, it's going to be milky and it should, it should <laughs> clear as it dries. So always fun, always scary, but there we go. I can see it glazing already. Which red? Uh, I don't know. Have to read really quick. Just gotta put a weight on here. I can. It looks like I can go a little stronger. It is bright red. That's all it says. And I don't know. These are those from the little craft shops. The really cheap, cheap little tubes of paint you get.
I'm going to try to avoid painting into the water with this one because we want to. It's very brushy. I'm definitely seeing that. Maybe if I used a softer brush, I wouldn't have such brush marks. Or maybe if I used a lighter touch. And bring some of that red down into the tops of some of these trees or bushes, sorry. Yeah, so it's glazing. It's definitely kind of milky. Um, I'm going to bring a little bit of that into my grasses. Let me find my reference. And again, this is just going to be kind of the underpainting for my oil painting. Here's my reference. I'm not too, too worried about the colors exactly, but I am going to try and capture some of this glow that I'm seeing. And definitely a little bit interesting with that milkiness, just kind of hoping and believing that it's going to go away. Let's make some of the reds a little stronger. So I'm just adding a little more of the acrylic, red acrylic paint into that medium. So I can have it really thin if I just wanted to use mostly, mostly all medium, or I can have it a little stronger by just adding a little more of my acrylic color into the medium itself. Any questions, kind of what I'm doing, or any advice? <laughs> I'm curious um, why you're not using yellow. Uh, you know, I sure could. Um, I mean, it's working. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's a red. But then I would come back in with my oil paints, probably. Oh, and the, the, uh, the one good thing about the gloss gel I read is that it does slow the drying time a little bit. So you'd have a little more chance to um, do some of the kind of wiping away stuff that I like doing. A little more. All right, go to my purple real quick here. Okay, Michael, am I understanding the reason you're doing this is so the oil paint will adhere better? Yeah, so the matte medium is a great uh, surface. Like you can almost gesso with matte medium. It's really a nice porous um, type of paint. Whereas the, gla the um, gloss gel is not very porous. So the oil paints don't have anything to really grab onto. I would prefer to use the gloss gel because it's so much clearer and has a nice shine to it. So that's why I was kind of thinking maybe down the road, I will experiment with a mixture of the two because I do know you can mix matte medium and the gel medium, the gloss gel medium. But uh, that's just, I feel like that's too much to take on all at once. So when experimenting, I try to see if I can do it kind of a step at a time. So I can kind of figure out what's working, what's not working. I mean, the worst case scenario right now is I would just paint over this whole thing with oil paints. I'd still have my design that I could see. Um, and, you know, and I would still have a very workable surface because of the matte medium. So anyways, right now, this is all matte medium and acrylic paint with a little bit of water. Did you switch colors? Yes, so I just went to a purple. And I like that. That's pretty cool how it's kind of pushing that back a little bit. Um, and I'm just don't know because it says it dries clear. We'll see. I'm, I'm having faith.
All right, bring a little purple down into these grasses. I kind of like the softness of it being milky. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you, you know, if I wanted that, right, all I'd have to do is add a little bit of white into this paint. And I can definitely do that. But I think I might prefer to do that with my oil paints personally um, to make kind of the fogginess and stuff. We'll see. That's what actually what I'm intending to do with the next big painting. Um, as I'm putting this on, I'm going to one more time say thank you guys for being understanding and apologize for the inconvenience and oddness of the internet connection. So I guess there are definitely some downsides to using Zoom. Um, and we bumped into it big time today and I apologize, um, but I won't talk about it anymore after that. And we'll just keep painting and hope that the rest of the class is smooth sailing. So now I'm gonna to go to the blue. Mixing that into the matte medium. I'm gonna bring in some of the blue into the shadows. Kind of the areas that are getting hit by the least amount of the sunlight. And we'll see what happens. We're doing this for our acrylic friends in the group who um, we're definitely bumping into some issues because of the drying time with the acrylics. So I just thought that that was a good excuse to experiment with the different mediums and different ways of possibly glazing in. So hopefully you kind of got this feeling. It's a little bit dramatic. I'm gonna probably bring a little more of that purple down into that blue. I feel like that's too big of a shift that blue to that purple. So I'm gonna blend in a little more purple into that blue because I like those colors better than the, that really cold blue. And that would be just a matter of taste. And again, most all of this will be covered with oils anyways eventually. Yeah, and it's already starting to dry and it is getting a little crisper, a little clearer up there. And what I will do is I will go ahead and use your advice and I'll grab some yellow and glaze into there with some yellow, so. And I don't want this area down here to be too milky and white. These darks, I actually wanna preserve them because that will bring this forward compared to back there. So I'll go ahead and put it in, let it sit for a second and then probably uh, kind of wipe back some of those darks. Does that make sense? The darker darks want to come forward when you have atmospheric perspective going on. I'm just going to take my brush and just wipe it a little bit clean. And then that should allow me to kind of yeah, pick up some of these darks, make that area a little thinner. And we are just having fun, we're experimenting. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new plate really quick so I can do it with the gloss gel. So a clean plate so I can put gloss gel on there, but I wanted to do some of the yellow as well. So let me grab a yellow color. All right, I just grabbed the first yellow I saw which is called golden yellow. Squeeze out a little bit of that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, grab a clean brush, just so I know I'm not contaminating with all the blue and purple. Mixing that into my matte medium and let's Glaze in with some yellow.
So I probably could have done even yellow across the background, all the top here, and then come over it with the red instead. Is that showing up on the screen okay for you guys? Yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Pretty strong, holy cow. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush off, maybe even paint into it with a little bit of just gel, I mean the matte medium, because it's really quite strong. So I'm gonna kind of make it, so it's not as yellow, I don't want it so crazy. I definitely wanted to experiment with you guys, but it's uh, it's a funny thing to try something for the first time. Again, I keep doing that in this class, don't I? So now I'm just kind of taking my brush and pulling back up so it gets back to the white. You guys see that a little bit as it's lightening here? I just don't want it so, so yellow. No, it's kind of got a nice effect. Yeah, the yellow and the purple. Yeah, they really play well together, don't they? Complementary colors. Even taking off a little more of that yellow, letting it kind of sit on the periphery of those tree branches. Oh yeah, that's kind of fun. Kind of interesting. All right, now I'm gonna put the lid back on the matte medium and let's get to the gloss gel and see what happens. And so just as a reminder, you'll notice that I go yellow to red to purple, then to blue. If I go yellow to blue, I'm just going to get green, which is fine. I mean, I can definitely, maybe I'll even glaze in some. Let's try that. Let's make a little green in the grasses in the foreground here with the two colors I've got. Oof, that's very green. And add a little red to that green so it's not so, so green. So there I've mixed all my primaries. Hideous. <laughs> Definitely gonna to wanna to wipe that back a little bit. It's really, maybe I can add more of the matte medium to make it a little thinner. So I just grabbed straight matte medium because it was going on a little too opaque. It wasn't really glazing, it was just painting right over the top. And let's How did you start with a gloss gel with the green or with the matte medium? That was the matte medium, so I haven't put out the gloss gel yet. Okay. Letting a little bit of that grass show through. Again, I'm not too, too worried about too much because my plan is to put oil paints on top of this in approximately how, how long until I can paint oils over the top? Three days. Three days, thank you. 
Yeah, it's not about drying, it's about curing. So that's the one thing to remember when you're painting with acrylics is before you paint your oils in, let it dry for three days. So it's definitely tacking up very quickly. Um, so we'll, this will be a good opportunity to kind of do a side-by-side -side test and see does the uh, gloss gel, in fact, give us more time. So the gloss gel is quite, it's like thick mayonnaise. Look at that, it can hold it upside down. So it definitely comes out like a gel um, for you acrylic painters. It may be interesting to, um, yeah, it's really, really thick. Um, this is a great one if you wanna add more texture to your acrylic paintings or more depth, maybe when you're getting to the impressionist paintings, um, this may be a great thing for you to add to your paint. It adds translucency, meaning it makes your paints more transparent, and but it also keeps its shape. Um, you can add water to it, 25%, um, or you can use it straight. Um, yeah, and again, going forward, what I may do is just do a 50-50 mix of the gloss gel and the acrylic medium, but that will be an experiment that I will do <laughs> in the privacy of my own studio, so not confusing everybody, but I'll let you guys know how that goes. All right, so I'm going to start with my red again because that's kind of my connector color, isn't it? Between um, between my yellow and my purple and my blue is the red. So I'm going to start with the red again, doing kind of the inverse, well, the reflection of what I had up there. So I add a little red to my gloss gel. And let's see. It's definitely a little slipperier. It, the other one, almost the matte medium feels like almost there's like a tiny bit of sand in it or something. Um, whereas this one, oh. Okay, did I lose you guys for a second? Yeah, but you're back. Okay, my daughter keeps texting me. She's getting her oil changed for the first time. Gabby, can you call Elena? Talk to her about the oil change. Thank you. Um, yeah. I joined late, so I apologize if this is a silly question, but would you ever mix these with oils or is this only for acrylics? No, you would definitely not mix these with oils. Okay. But you can paint oils over the top after three days of curing time, drying time. So that's what I will do is I'll come back in with oils on top um, sometime next week. So again, probably a lot of you may never do any of this with the, the kind of glazing with acrylics. Um, but again, there's three or four people in here and then a number of you that are um, more curious about experimenting with it. And maybe this is a way to kind of speed up your, you know, your eventual oil painting. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get to my yellow. Doing the same thing, mixing the yellow in with a touch of water and in with the and uh, with the gel. Good. 
They say it dries slower, but I definitely feel it getting sticky very quickly. So I don't know for the acrylic painters, if any of you guys are using extenders, which make it dry slower or anything, I imagine you could mix that into here. Um, I don't have any of that stuff personally, but that may be a way if you're just really not liking how quickly they're tacking up. The other thing I have is a simple misting tool. So if things are drying too quickly, I can just hit them with the mister and that should give me a little more working time. Um, I do do that a lot actually while I'm doing my uh, acrylic black and white paintings. Got an interesting line going on over here. So when you sell a painting using these methods, do you list it as mixed media? That is a good question. I haven't really sold very many of them yet. It's pretty new to me. Um, I don't know. I, I may just say oil painting because, I mean, I don't tell them that there's an acrylic gesso underneath. Um, and I don't know if it would be confusing to more, more people or not. I guess I should find out what the, um, what, yeah, I don't know. That's a great question. What do you think I should do? Well, it makes sense what you said about gesso being underneath. Right. You could say oil over acrylic underpainting. Yeah, I sure could. I just, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I'll probably just say oil painting because it'll, the, everything, every inch of this will be covered with oil paint eventually. Sure. Um, um, I'd buy it. Let's get to some purple. So I'm curious if every inch of it's going to be covered with oil painting, then is the glazing just for this demonstration? Would you bother glazing mm -hmm. with acrylic in the future? Uh, again, this is my first time ever doing it. Um, so I don't know if I, if I, if I find like a, like, wow, this is really saving me time and helping me kind of establish my colors. Um, I definitely could see myself doing it, but uh, most likely I think I would enjoy doing this with oils more. This was, this came about because of questions from last week's class from a couple students of, you know, if you were doing oil or acrylics, how would you go about doing it? And that just got my brain thinking of, oh, well, I have, you know, these two mediums that we use for other stuff and my daughter uses. Let's experiment and see what happens. Michael, didn't you say that the matte medium actually allows the oil paint to adhere better? It does, yeah. So that would be another thing is I might do is even just putting a clear uh, layer of matte medium over my acrylic painting, I think would make a better bond than just the acrylic but again from what i'm reading the acrylic paints do make a pretty good surface to put the oils on but yeah i'm already it's already getting really it's like painting with honey right now Definitely slowing down and not wanting to move as much. But I mean, all in all, there's some interesting things going on. Um, maybe I can design some of these things. So I just picked up a little brush, putting a little more red on there. And I'm just going to pull out some of my edges and give 
you know, give these grasses. It's interesting. I can't say I loved it, but it's hard to love something the very first time you do it, right? Because you're just experimenting and everything's so new. But I definitely think there's potential in it. Um, I would be curious for the acrylic painters who are more experienced with acrylics to let me know what they think or what other things they come up with. Again, I think having an extender in it, I would love to have like five, 10 more minutes before it's tacking up so much um, to play with it um, and move it around. Just warming up some areas where I want the sun to really feel like it's coming through the foliage. So it's not just sky hole, sky hole, but there's more of transparent foliage back here. The leaves are letting a little more light come through. You can even do kind of a transparent red. Almost feel like the leaves are themselves glowing because it's nice that transparent color. Like now I'm starting to go, oh, well, this could be useful actually. Yeah, can you guys see that kind of halo in there a little bit in yeah. the reds? Uh, can you guys see this area in here where it's getting warmer with the red? Yes, yes, yes. So that's so now I'm just glazed. So that's one big advantage, right? Now I'm glazing colors over each other that quickly, which I just couldn't do with oils. They would be mixing and pushing each other. So there are some advantages to being able to glaze glazes right on top of each other really quickly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing. <laughs> you know, it's already been two experiments. Why not do a third? So now I am mixing my. Um, to the matte medium and the glazing gel a little bit. And uh, oh boy. If it all gets covered up with oil, how will the different mediums make a difference? Um, can you ask me that again? Yeah, so if you're doing gloss in the water and matte in the trees, when you cover it with oil, will it make a difference? In, in theory, yes. Um, the gloss should be a little slipperier. So you, you know, you've had that feeling where you're painting on a canvas and the paint kind of sucks in, and then you've painted like on a panel and the paint just kind of slips around on top a lot more. Have you had that experience painting? I understand. Okay, so the gloss gel, and this is just in theory right now, because again, first time I've ever done it. Um, the gloss gel should be like painting on the panel where the paint's not sucking in as much, the oils. And so thusly, it doesn't quite have as good a bond. Um, the matte medium is more porous, it's more like, acrylic gesso has that kind of sandy feel to it. It wants to grab the oil paints. Um, the uh, gel will be a little bit more shiny, a little less thirsty, a little less absorbent for the oil paints. Thusly, it will have a slightly lesser bond. And the truth is, I'm not finding it to be like, I'm finding that to dry really quite clear. You know, th these aren't as dark as they could have been, but maybe if I'd have used more transparent acrylics versus maybe those acrylics were a little opaque, maybe I didn't add enough um, medium into it. Um, yeah, I I'm hoping this is useful and not just kind of a silly 
waste of your time. Um, but it is interesting. And I am really having fun now that I'm getting into where I'm kind of becoming a little more specific about the glazes and of where I want them. And again, I kind of feel like it feels like light coming through transparent leaves. Yeah, it's getting this kind of nice effect. You guys have any thoughts? Do you think it's kind of interesting or? Looks beautiful. All right, good. Yeah, it's lovely. So I am able to do a lot more color transitions this way, a lot faster. So I could see this being useful. And if you guys want to experiment with it and you know just do acrylics, that's fine too. It doesn't need to be an oil painting class. Um, yeah, I'll be curious. Like now do I come in and glaze over this with oils? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. It'll be, or do I just come in and bring out the colors I want and the brush strokes I want and play with that part of it? It's, I will, I got a week to decide before it's dry, so. Question. Sure, I'm having a hard time hearing you though. Is it possible to uh, zoom in with the Zoom? Uh, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I'm not on my computer. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Let me just move the tripod much closer. Yeah, I think that was why the school suggested I do it with the uh, DSLR camera because of that, that ability to zoom. But is that I better? See, yes, I see a lot more. Um, All right, unfortunately, it's like right on my shoulder, <laughs> but uh, I'll try to stand off to the side or maybe I can move this over here. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks pretty nice in the, in the screen. Okay, well, I think we get the idea of it. I kind of obliterated my grass down here. I could put too much paint. Maybe I can, let's just mist it one time and see if I can pull some off. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go, get some of those darts back. A little bit. I'm getting drips going down, but oh well. All right, that was an interesting experiment, but I do feel like for the most part, and if this part is too slippery, like if I rub my fingers across, oh man, it's already dry. And I'm just like, yeah, that's way too slippery for my oil paints. I can simply take a thin coat of the matte medium, which I still have over here. And I can just put a little bit of that on there and that will dry clear. And so that's actually, maybe that's the way to do it. Ha ha, is if you like the acrylic gel, then you can come over it with a thin layer of the matte medium. And I think one of you guys maybe even mentioned that earlier. Because again, this will dry clear and I'll have created a nice surface for my oil paints. Pretty fun, pretty wild. But yeah, some of these areas are really interesting. Really some beautiful transitions from the cools to the warms. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring a touch of the bluey purple into this sky so that my light feels like it's coming from this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cool this sky down a little bit over here.
Look at that, it's glazing so fast that I can have the purple and the yellow on top of each other. I mean, it's drying so quick. I could never do that with oils. So it's doing kind of this cool optical mixing where if I was able to zoom in here, I've got the yellow, let's see if I can do it. The yellow is still showing underneath, but I've got purple on top and they're not mixing. It's the striations of the board and the surface texture. And so it's doing what's called optical mixing where our eye sees the yellow and the purple next to each other and creates a third color, which should kind of serve to gray down that sky a little bit. Kind of nice, maybe a little more blue even. Maybe I should have let that dry a little more. Michael, are you working with a half matte and half um, gel at this point? Uh, mostly probably just the acrylic matte medium. I think it has become kind of a mess. But I am finding that they work fine together. Like I went over with the matte medium down here. So yeah, I, I, I look forward to, um, especially the acrylic painters, kind of experimenting and seeing what they think. Um, and any of you that want to, and you don't have to buy the big tub, they come in, I think they even come in all the way down to this little size. Um, yeah, I actually have. Oh, and then they have glazing medium, which we don't, we're out of, but my daughter has glazing medium for acrylics too. Um, I would probably read about that if it's okay to, I would probably do the matte medium over the top if I did the glazing medium. Did you find a benefit in using the glazing first? Not too much no because uh, this dry i mean they both dried pretty clear mm -hmm. um because this was grayed down compared to up here um no i didn't find that much of a difference i guess it would come down to if you wanted to have more of your brushwork the gel again keeps is very you know consist like very dense whereas this stuff's very runny so that would be kind of more where you're, uh, um, where you would get to decide. All right. Mike, when yeah. um, I did my acrylic painting, I would mix my own medium. I would um, do a, a matte medium with a gloss medium to make like a satin. Maybe yeah, yeah, that's what I think I would probably do too. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like the high gloss and the matte look dead. So, um, and, and they mix really well together. So I great. If you if you're going to mix these these um, uh, acrylic mediums, they dry clear, and I don't think it should be a problem. Perfect. Thank you. You guys heard it there. Somebody who's done it more than once. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, so I, I like it. I think that this could definitely be, I mean, if I had to pay more attention to the grasses, I actually really like the top part. These part I hate, but, um, you know, maybe I'll just cut this board in half and be done. Just kidding. But um, I think it'll be fun to go back in with some oils and finesse this and add, you know, leaves and whatever other information I want into there. I don't know what I'll do with this going forward, but it's, like I said, it, it's fun just to have different tools and different ways of solving problems. And so this, yeah, it makes a nice surface and it's already dry. <laughs> so crazy. Um, the top, even though I just painted it is dry, this part is still stickier. So the glazing, 
the the gloss gel does definitely is a little bit slower. So just for your notes, but how much I don't know. All right, gang, five minute break, and I'm going to pull up our other painting that we started last week, and I'm going to see if I can make it so that the palette is beside there. Um, but it's a big painting, so I'm going to have to see if there's room for everybody. All right, so yeah, five minute break. See you at 11.22 or 11.23, something like that.
All right, looks like it's a good thing I transferred over to the phone because my internet is down again in the house. So whatever is going on. This is working out great. All right, good. What I'll try to do is bring it up on my iPad also so that, cause I can't see you guys at all. All I have is the phone. So I have no idea what you're actually seeing cause the phone is behind me. So I'm gonna take one or two more minutes. Sorry to keep, we'll go long for those of you that want to um, just cause so much time was wasted. And I'll see if I can't edit the video a little bit this time, maybe. So does that work? Whoa. Now I have it up in three devices. Does that sound really strange to everybody? Are, are you muting the iPad? Yeah, I believe I am, yeah. It sounds better now. It do, I don't have that echo now. Okay. I'm still sounds hearing good. it through my iPad. Okay. All right, now I can see everybody, but I can also hear myself echoing back. Are you guys hearing any sort of echo? No. It may be very faint. I wouldn't worry about it at all. There we go. That way I don't see myself. And I can see you guys and hear you through, I think I'm still hearing you through my phone. Man. Michael, did you glaze that with just Indian yellow last week or is there something else on there? There was a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of blue, but we pretty much went back and wiped all the blue off. It looked really strange. Okay. In there. All right. Do you always start with Indian yellow? <laughs> Seems like it, but no. <laughs> um, start with, I like reds a lot, but I do seem to start with warm colors often. All right, let me grab my references. But is that good to do because then it helps establish the light more? I, yeah, I'm just going to stop this. Um, I think I like it better because I just like warmer paintings as kind of a rule. And yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of become a personal preference, but I've definitely had instructors in the past who suggest blue and gray as their undercolor to paint from. Um, I just seem to have evolved this way. So again, that will be kind of a matter of taste as you, you know, experiment and try out different ways of painting um, what you like. So I grabbed just a number of different references. Um, 
for all sorts of stuff. This has just got the textures of the trees and different grasses. This one, I kind of want to capture a little bit of this feeling. I might bring in some of these purpley flowers there. Um, I grabbed this one because I actually want to cool down a lot of it. I'm going to make the light source feel much more special. At least I hope so here in a little bit. I'm going to um, I grabbed this one just because I actually like the colors and the cools versus warms. Um, yeah. So I just grabbed a whole bunch of references this morning, um, you know, and that's often how I'll work is I'll have just kind of a pile of references to look from. Um, and then it's combined with combined with my own photo. And because I've already painted this once, I just kind of thought I would try it with some different colors. All right, so I suggest, you know, having lots of references. If you're having a hard time, you know, making up your trees or making up your flowers or making up your grasses, then just take a second, go online. There's, you know, thousands of images, millions and millions of images at your, you know, just by a matter of doing a Google search or, Whatever else, there's also a lot of websites that have free um, references you could use um, that are just for painters. So anyways, I, I do that a lot. Um, when I was uh, doing illustration, I used a lot, a lot of references. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of redden up some of this area. So I'm going to do almost kind of like a glaze but I'm gonna be painting into it this time at a faster rate. So I'm putting a little bit of Galkid gel and I'm gonna do a Galkid gel or a Galkid mixed with a little bit of paint thinner. And I'm just gonna scrub in and I'm using the Galkid gel in there just to make sure that I've got good adhesion with this. So I'm just gonna simply come in and add a little bit of red just because that's kind of the feeling I want. It's going to kind of go yellow, reds, pinks, purples, blues. Not too unlike the one we just did, actually, a little bit. I just let that sit for just a second and then I'm just going to lightly wipe it down with my paper towel. A little more down here in the water. A very quick way to kind of alter my colors a little bit. Again, I've got that Galkid gel in there so that it's not just paint thinner. Otherwise, I would be afraid it wouldn't stick very well. And by wiping it down with my paper towel, I'll be able to paint on it right away. It's not going to be, you know, sopping wet and too slippery and too runny. What a difference already, isn't that kind of cool? If I didn't like it, I could simply put a little, because this is very dry, I could simply put a little bit of paint thinner onto my paper towel and come back in and I can get it right back to where it was. Got a 
little bit of that red on my paper towel. So I'm just gonna take it around, and let it catch the edges of some of these grasses. Clean paper towel, I'm gonna hit the tops of these one more time, just lightly so that they're not quite as red right near the sun, a little more on the orange side, hopefully. So I already like that. I like how that warmed it up and everything else. Um, it's not all just yellow anymore. And it, what does that do to the yellowy areas that were left? Is it because of the contrast with the red, it really makes you feel the green a little more, doesn't it? Pretty glary. Let's see if we can, what happens if I turn this light either down, let's try the brightness. And off. Yeah, I guess that's a little better. So these areas you're seeing here where it's kind of a different shine is in fact a different shine. Um, that's where I had all the blue that I didn't like last week and I kind of came back at the end and just wiped it off. I should have probably put kind of a, a equalizing uh, shine all over the whole thing, but I didn't. So we'll deal with that, but that should be fine. All right, so now, what I'm gonna do is do kind of like I did here, but now I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and white to my mixture. So I'm gonna add a little bit, I've got my, down here, I've got my quinacridone red. I'm gonna mix some of my manganese blue, which makes one of my favorite purples. Cause I wanna cool this down, these trees. But I'm gonna add some white. And I'm not going to add much medium to this because I want to actually scumble in. When I use white, I usually don't use too much medium. I'll do kind of more of a almost like a dry brushing technique. Uh, Michael, which, which red did you use? Did you use the quinacridone or the cadmium? I did, yeah, which is interesting because it should be, a, you know, this should be a brighter red. But because it's over the yellow, it warmed it up quite a lot. So can you guys can see this little bit of purple down here on the on the palette. I'm just kind of trying to see how blue, how purple I want it. I'm going to let it get a little more purple as it gets towards this red and then it's going to get bluer and uh, a little cooler as it gets away. And what I'm going to try to do is push these trees back. I want there to be a feeling of atmosphere, a lot of fog, which already is hopefully there, but I even want more. I want there to be a cool fog that's in this painting and then the warm light coming through the other side from the back. Does that make sense? Let's see if I'm crazy or then already. So I'm just putting a little bit of the paint on there. I'm gonna go ahead and move it around where I want it here in just a second. So that's kind of the purple where it, the nice thing about building it up with this layer is even though I have yellow there, it's not going to mix with that yellow, right? The purple is not going to mix. It's sitting on top. So I'm going to get this nice effect of the fog kind of appearing in front of that. I'm gonna add a little more blue, maybe a touch darker as I get towards these trees over here. Even a little bit cooler, but and a little bit darker. Okay. 
So I'm just kind of dry brush scrubbing it on top of the surface. There might be just a touch of the, um, of the gel in there, but I don't want very much at all. I just want enough that it's creating a glue again to make sure that it binds to the surface and doesn't come falling off. Now the nice thing is where I've got the purple is it, wherever I take it in, it's going to the red. So it's not gonna be pure, it's not gonna turn to mud. So again, I'm just being aware of what colors are beside each other when I'm glazing or when I'm scumbling like this um, so that I don't accidentally mix blue and or purple and yellow and all of a sudden end up with brown where I don't want it. So that's something to bear in mind is what colors are gonna be touching I'm going to knock this blue back just a bit. It's a little too strong. Okay, what color should my grasses be? Like they're pretty nice and yellow, pretty nice and reddish. Do I want them to go towards green so that they cool down a little bit and this whole scene has kind of a slightly cooler or do I let the light? I'm going to, and I'm open to advice on this. I think I'll do is I think I'll bring in some of the purples actually into here as well. And again, the light is here. So it's raking down across here. So this will be my probably my warmest area on my grass and kind of this line. And then I can let it get cooler. And then this area of the grass back here is in shadow behind these trees. So I can let it be cooler and there'll be kind of like this almost triangle of light coming up. Sorry, I'm blocking my thing. Imagine like a triangle of light. <laughs> Still blocking it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So the area is back in here. Back in here will be cooler, 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 cooler in the shadow sides and warmer as it comes across. So. Let me look through my reference really quick. I've got this, this one has very, uh, hard to see, very green, light green grass, but it has a very nice, cool feel to it. That could be nice. Um, and then I, I'll always be able to allow some of this color to show through. Um, this reference here, is closest, but it's very dark because the grasses are very high. We're not seeing much of the top, but I can see back here, and this is the closest kind of to the light that we have. So it may kind of reflect onto that one. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some green. Now I guess I should do it up here so you guys can see it. brush hair in there. So what I did there was um, French ultramarine and just my cool lemony yellow. Makes a very dark green. I'm gonna go ahead and add some manganese blue to that so that it goes more towards the, um, 
more towards kind of an aqua color a little bit. Let's add a little white so we can see it. So definitely not much of a grass color that I've got going on there, very much more aqua. I can bring it a little closer while I'm mixing it. So I'm gonna add a little more yellow to that again. It's a beautiful green, not sure if it's what we're looking for. Try mixing it in with that French ultramarine over here. So it's nice having the palette right beside because I can quickly scan my eye across and go, man, that would be a really big departure if I bring that green in there, but maybe we could do it. Let's try warming that up a little bit, a little more yellow, maybe even a little bit of our warm yellow. It's gonna, this yellow has red in it. So I gotta remember when I mix that with my green, it's gonna neutralize the green because red plus green goes towards gray. So there it's a little warmer. It feels like it could exist in this world a little better. A little white. A little warmer again, let's see what happens. I'm just experimenting. I'm just kind of seeing what color could exist in here and is gonna do kind of give me the feeling that I'm after. All right, there we go, getting warmer. So there, I probably went just shooting past it. A little too creamy, a little too white. It's almost getting cool again because of all that white. So we can back into the yellow. I can even add a little red. It's fun just to see where the color kind of goes. All right, now I'm getting closer. So if I put that, let's just put a little dab of it and see how that feels. Kind of under there. I could probably stand to warm that up. So maybe that would be the color that kind of exists on the edge of my triangle of light a little bit, or the transition color between the cools and the lights. So I'm gonna make another slightly warmer. Maybe it's hardly even gonna be green anymore. To really go towards the oranges. So I'm mixing the red and the yellow. I'm, I'm introducing orange with the green. It should be very muted. Kind of an ugly color, but let's see what happens when we mix it with the green again. There, we're getting something a little bit. You guys kind of understand how I'm doing that, kind of going back and forth and just trying to kind of feel out the colors. This might be nice if I had it a little more figured out in my head exactly what I was going to try to do. Um, but as I've been painting all the classes with you guys, a lot of experimenting and playing and just seeing what can the painting bear? What does it want? What do I want from it? So Michael, in this situation, is your land plane still going to be lighter than your trees then following the four colors of a landscape? Right, yes, I think they will. And I'm still, even with all this that I just did, I'm kind of like, now, you know what? I kind of want purple back there. I kind of want a cool, misty, 
like the fog is just kind of sitting on the ground back here. And that's kind of what I like. So I'm going to try that really quick before I go to these colors. And I can still use these colors as the grass comes forward and we're getting less fog in the way, less um, mist. So if you guys will bear with me for a second, what I'm going to do, and I oftentimes would do this at the end or towards the end, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer of fog kind of throughout back here. And I'm going to bring that into the base of my water and into the base of some of these objects a little bit. And I'm going to see what that does, because that will kind of dictate what's happening with these grasses. So, um, yeah, that's kind of part of the fun is just kind of going, OK, well, what is the best order of events? Maybe it is different than how I might do it typically. So I'm going to go ahead and make kind of a warm fog that will be under here. And then that's also just like everything else gonna cool off a little bit. So I'm gonna make kind of a pink. You guys can see my palette still. And introduce a little bit of that warm. Oh yeah, I love, you guys know me, I love peach. It's my favorite color. Anytime I can sneak in some peach color into my skies or paintings. I'm going to see what happens. Wish me luck. Bring kind of a little bit of warm idea of fog. Pretty crazy. Let's see what happens. Cleaning a brush real quick. Yeah, so with the acrylics, I could never do this, right? Because it would be drying so quickly. But hopefully with these oils, I've got a couple minutes at least to get in there and play with it and move it around. So I'm going to start with the warm. And I'm just going to push that little bit of paint that I have on there. It looks like a lot and it looks really, really stark right now. And it is, but. Is that a dry brush? Uh, almost dry brush, but it, I took all the paint off it. It has probably just a little bit of paint thinner, a little bit of the Gansol, or the Galkid, sorry, on there. And I'm just taking my brush and wiping it off every time I kind of stop. So I've got my cool color here, purples, purples, going towards pinks and towards even a peach kind of under here. Now, I'm gonna, I, now it's a dry brush. I just wiped it really quite clean. I want there to be a bush right here. so trying to kind of give it shape by, you know, bringing the fog back behind it.
You let that get a little cooler as it comes down towards us a little bit. Hopefully that's reading is cooler and probably even get a little bit darker with it. So it's kind of in the shadows behind that bank. So cleaning my brush again. Now I'll go back to scumbling. I have just a little bit of the of the gel in the paint. So again, trying to make sure that I've got a little bit of a bond. I want my Fog to be getting a little less, a little more diffuse up as I get coming forward. Now just take my paper towel. Just letting, taking back some of that fog. Wiped a little bit too hard there, so I'm going to bring some of that back. And we do the same thing kind of to the top layer of the fog, soften that up to make it a little more irregular by just kind of rolling my So you see how that hopefully is starting to feel a little bit like kind of a layer of thin fog kind of sitting. It should get thicker the further away it goes. I'm hoping. So again, with the oil paints, I have some time to kind of come in and manipulate that a little bit. It's probably the camera, but it doesn't look warmer where the sun is. Yeah, I could probably definitely warm that up. You're talking about under here? Yes. Yeah, good idea. I could probably warm that up. Thank you. I think it's because I blurred it back and forth so many times too. I probably just dragged all the colors together versus kind of doing it more spotty, which may have been smarter. And I just bring back the hints of some of the detail. Again, more as it gets closer. 
less as it gets further away. It's nice painting on top of a dry painting because, you know, I can just kind of lift away where I go, oh, that's too much color, too much paint, too much whatever. And I've got that little bit of time to see if this scumbling in of the fog is actually what I want. I hopefully you can see, but I love that transition right there. Um, from the light down. I think that just looks kind of authentic. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and warm up the fog. Thank you, cat. This brush wants to throw all of its hairs out. Okay. Yeah. Is that a I'm having a hard time hearing you, sorry. Is that a bristle brush? Yeah, it's just one of my daughter's bristle brushes that I stole. I think they come in a pack of, you know, 20 and they're all different types. But yeah, I use just all sorts of brushes. I mean, the one I was using earlier is actually one of my nicest brushes um, or most expensive, I should say. Any brush is nice if it does the job you need. Um, but yeah, I, I like just especially for when I'm scumbling. I like kind of irregular, just kind of random uh brushes and uh yeah and, and i can just be as mean as i want because it probably costs a dollar maybe less just a student quality but the problem is that they do throw their hairs so you're always kind of watching for that so now i'm just i put on that warm color a little bit a little lighter a little warmer again it might be a little hard to see on the monitor um, and I'm just going to kind of bring that I want these trees in the middle to kind of feel like they're being hit by the light, but also kind of the furthest back there. So I'm taking the fog up just a touch higher in front of them, and then it gets a little lower as these trees come forward. So I'm hoping to feel that feels like uh, a little bit of space, a little bit of distance. The fog may in fact be a little too thick. What do you think? You think that line of fog is too strong? Yes, just a tad. Yeah, so let's go ahead and hopefully, hopefully knock it back just a little bit. Does that kind of do it there a little bit, hopefully? No, nope, still a little more. It is, you know, a little different on the monitor, appearing a little brighter, but 
it's so nice, right? I mean, you just go back and forth slowly till I get kind of the feeling that I want, even if I don't know what feeling I want. <laughs> um, I'm still just kind of going by how does my chest feel when I step back and look at it? Is it a little bit tight? That means something's wrong. Are my shoulders a little bit tense when I look at it? Means there's probably something wrong. But if I step back and kind of, ooh, ah, yeah, you know, I'm, things loosen up. And I know I'm kind of getting closer. So I got to keep stepping back a little ways. Are you adding a little yellow there? I added a little bit of yellow into here, yeah, to warm that up underneath the sun. You can. So warmed it up just a touch more. Want it to be kind of special in that area. But I don't want it to be up here like all of a sudden it's warm and thick. Kind of can't see over there, but got to remember wherever I have my little holes of sky holes, I got to bring my fog in there too. Look weird if all of a sudden it just hit the tree and stopped. I think I would like to see some low sky holes in that area where it's warmest and then have the light come through and make the fog glow in that area. All right. So punch some of these holes back. Is that kind of what you meant? Like back in no. this area? Go down so that the fog glows right in front of them. All right. The base of the trees. Right here. Not, I don't want to tell you what to do, but that's what I would love to see you do. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping that it will warm up, but maybe what I have to do is actually to make that feel warmer, maybe what I need to do is cool this down, the other parts. Because if I add yellow, it looks really strange i've done that a couple times with your q-tip like rub away a little bit on the ground level in that one area just right through here uh the tree line back here the trees the bottom of the trees just a little oh. and are we talking about these middle trees back here yep where like what she was saying that the, the, the through the fog a little yellow glow is coming through the fog Right at the base there, okay. The nice thing about the iPhone is it doesn't keep going in and out of focus like the other camera does as much, at least. Yeah, that is nice. Hmm, all right. 
Yeah, sorry, I don't know how to pin it on my phone though, because yeah, it keeps wanting to go to whoever's whoever's talking, which is fine, but I'll just keep remembering to try to say something. Is that kind of a little bit what you were talking about, guys? Spending a lot of time back there. All right, still got my fog down here, which is going to be less. And I'll, so I'm just going to thin that out. Chill. You know, for us, when one of us is talking, it doesn't go to the, the person that's talking. We see you constantly. Oh, so that's really, that's really nice. Yeah, that is nice. I wonder why it's doing that. I don't know what I chose to do, or maybe you guys all did it. Maybe you guys all pinned me somehow. You told us to, so we did. Yeah. Well, all right, you guys listened. That's awesome. So I'm kind of glad I went to the fog because I think that is going to kind of dictate the cool and the colors that I choose as I move forward with the tops of these grasses, the sides of these trees, the tops of you know everything else. So I think, and I, I can always go back in here and manipulate more, you know, especially after it's dried a little bit, I can change the color temperature. I do think maybe the fog could be a little cooler further away and that would make it a little more special here. Michael, I'm I'm confused by the white lines right at the grass edge. That's supposed to be fog. Yeah. Yeah, fog likes to sit right along the banks of things, right on the But it'll be much thinner this close to us, right? The fog is very light. I guess I've never seen that. I've always seen it kind of huddling over the water and whatnot, but right. Not, not right along the edges. Yeah, and I'll probably bring it across the water more as I build it up, but for some reason whenever someone talks i can't see michael at all so you want to pin me so i think if you double click double tap the image of me it should say pin pin All right, I want to cool down my sky as well. So I'm going to, my goal is to keep bringing the sense of light towards this light source. So I'm going to go ahead and cool that sky down as well. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of pink on the edge there. I'm actually adding the colors that I had in the fog. They're kind of more purple. A little hard to see on the monitor. So glary up top there. Hopefully by knocking down that purple or, or that yellow on top, it'll bring our focus in towards the light.
Now where it's getting towards the light, I'm just adding a little bit of yellow, making it a touch warmer. Sure doing a lot of scumbling in versus actually adding very thick paint right now, but I'm still kind of figuring out my colors. And so I get to kind of go both back and forth. So I like, I want to get to where I'm adding thicker paint. Ooh, yeah, see, I love that now that the sky is a little cooler, a little gray, purple kind of pinky color. Um, and that's really bringing the focus in to where that sun is. So I'll do that in the water as well. Gonna make it the coolest part of the water the furthest away, so the closest, they'll be the closest to us, but the furthest from the light and the highest up in the sky is what would be reflecting. And it's going to get pinker as it raises up and gets towards the light source and then back to my favorite peach color. You can probably bring a little of this blue all the way over here if I want. And start taking it towards the pink. As I get closer. That's the other really nice thing about having the uh, acrylic underpainting is it's not going anywhere. I can scrub these oils right on top and that painting is in there. It's stuck and then I went ahead and really stuck it by putting the glaze on top so it's like it's like I'm painting on top of a piece of glass on top of my design right like I'm putting my paint on glass on top so I'm not even touching that underpainting really is it starting to look like fog on the water down below a little bit now Yes. I'm just kind of making sure that they don't have bad transitions where I was trying to paint in between things. Um, if I wanted to, to protect these grasses, I could simply like take my Q-tip or my paper towels because I painted over a lot of it and just wipe back away really quickly. Or I can just come back in and paint, you know, over the tops of this with my oil paint. So either way is fine. And I'll probably do kind of a combination of both. Let's see if I put the light back on. Yeah. Look at that. It's starting to look like some fog and some different lighting elements going on in there. I have a question. Um, the, the sun, when it's in the water, is it cooler or is it warmer? How does the sun, its color affected by the water? It's usually a touch darker. 
like not quite as bright, but it, I mean, we've all seen it where, you know, it's just as bright as we can imagine because our eyes just can't tolerate the glare in the water. Um, but yeah, generally, if you're unsure, just a touch darker and maybe a touch cooler will be uh, safe. But truthfully, you can almost go as bright as you want, like as bright as the reflection. It's just not going to be brighter than the sun that it's reflecting. You know, unless the sun's not in the scene or something, like if the sun was up here, but still hitting the water, then it could be really bright. Kind of like that Joseph McGurl you showed us. Right. Yes, exactly right. It may be just the way the camera's hitting it, but it looks like there's something in the water right above the sun. Right here? Above it. Right there. Yeah. There's like yeah, that's supposed to be kind of the reflection of the shadow. So I may have to lighten that up a little bit. Uh, maybe I can red it a little bit too. Yeah, because that was kind of, you know, that was before I knew what was going to happen here. So that was the shadowy reflection. But yeah, I may have to come back in and knock that light out a little more. You're right. Which, you know, you can easily do just by... So it's kind of the first opaque paint I've added. All the rest has been so scumbled in that it's almost transparent. So yeah, as I keep building this up now, I would get to where I think I can start coming in and adding like the grass, the edges of these leaves, and more detail of flowers and everything else. Because do you guys see, do you guys understand why I kind of did what I just did by putting all that in? And it kind of helps me to understand what time of day I'm dealing with. Because it really did change from a, a sunset to a sunrise, I'm hoping. And I can still get a lot cooler in a lot of these areas. Um, I generally think of the sunrise as the light coming through the cool atmosphere that accumulated over the night. Whereas the sunset, excuse me, the sunset, you get that more golden because of all the um, particulates, the uh, dust, and maybe even the smog that humans are making all during the day, um, the smoke, whatever else. So you get, I, I, I often feel like, yeah, the sun rises are cooler and sunsets tend to be warmer. And it's not just me, my, you know, when I have shows and stuff, people will instinctually say, oh, I like it, nice sunrise. I think fog also oftentimes hints towards a sunrise. You know, lakes and creeks, of course, can get fog at any time of the day, but they do definitely accumulate it over the cool during the night. Um, so, yeah, um, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time to go into the details, but let me just kind of walk you through what I would do. I would let this tack up for like 15, 20 minutes so that when I come in and add, start adding paint, um, I'm not just pulling off. Man, this painting just goes and goes. Um, one thing I would definitely want to do after this is dry is probably come back in and cool the fog back here, maybe back here. And then, um, but I think what I can do is I can come in and paint um, everything that I wanna paint and then come back in at the end and add the fog one more time. I think that's what I'll do. That way I'll kind of tie it in. So what I would like to do, <clears throat> and maybe I'll do this afternoon or something, is I wanna come around and find the edges here where the light's coming through and it's transparent and I can really kind of make this glow. And I can decide, is it the warm light that's hitting it or is it maybe transparent leaves that are creating more of that sense of glow? The same thing's gonna happen on the edge of this bush, maybe rolling across the top. I can bring a lot of these grasses up that are gonna also be getting some glow. 
but I've got to not forget that the shadows are just as important. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to bring in, and sorry, this part just looks so lousy right now, um, but I'm going to come in and figure out what colors I want in here. Inevitably cool colors because I've got a warm light. So the shadows will be the inverse of that, the opposite. So probably a lot of nice blues and, you know, gray blues, green blues into here and into any area that's not getting hit by the direct light. And then I'll have the warm kind of edges. So I'll have the shadows will be cool. The shadows cool, shadows cool. Up here will be uh, cool. And then where the light is actually hitting some of these grasses, I can really play that up. Um, I am thinking that because I've got this nice kind of purple color up here, I kind of think I can harmonize it. Let me take it out of the sleeve. I can kind of harmonize it by bringing in some of these kind of purple uh, flowers in these. Um, I don't know, they almost look like some sort of a loop and I don't know. Um, but I think I can bring a couple of those in to bring that to harmonize my foreground and background a little bit. And also I'll be able to make some of those flowers translucent, which, you know, now since I did that calla lily painting, I'm a little bit addicted to. Um, so that's where my goals are um, for what's next in my painting. Any questions? Did that make sense at all? Kind of where we were going with that? and how I was kind of deciding my color scheme and everything else slowly building it up. Yes, thank love, you. Yes, and I would love to see at some point in time, maybe maybe for the impressionist part, um, how you add the detail grasses and flowers. Okay, great. I will see if I can't even just video it and post it to our group when I get to it. Um, I just don't, yeah. <laughs> My daughter just keeps texting and texting and texting. Otherwise I'd go long, but uh, she's doing car, getting the car worked on for the first time by herself. And I think she's a little panicked, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I can do that. And yeah, what I will do is just, you know, I've been using these big bold brushes. Um, now what I'll do is start picking up all the other brushes that I had set aside earlier today, which, you know, when I want grasses, I can simply take this nice flat brush and I'll turn it on its edge. I've also, one of my new favorite brushes is uh, these Egbert kind of brushes. This is called an Ivory Egbert uh, by Rosemary and Co. You gotta import that one from England, but beautiful brushes. Um, and what I like about that is it really makes some nice kind of um, very naturalistic shapes. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of these where I really like the long, long bristles. Um, I don't use shorts very much anymore. And then I did grab um, a, uh, a really soft brush as well. This is kind of like a mongoose. It's a synthetic mongoose. Um, so when I want to, so let's say, let's say that I decide my leaves on the edge of this tree are, I'm just gonna grab a color, very likely wipe this back off. But let's just pretend I decide the leaves on the edge of this are that bright. So you can kind of see, so imagine kind of something like that for my light along the edge of this tree as it's coming down, you know, I can, right? And then if I want, I can take this really soft brush and I can simply flick out the edges. Probably not the easiest to see. Let's see if I can zoom in there. So you see how it's just all just brush work, brush strokes. So I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna simply flick out the edge and it gets this nice kind of soft glowy feel to it and uh, it becomes so that not every brush stroke feels as crisp and the same. I, I don't want to do it to all of them but just a couple of them and it'll kind of add a naturalistic feel to it. So 
you know, and I don't know, that seems really extreme right now, really bright and garish, but you can kind of get the idea of, I oftentimes do that, like I did here with the fog, where I put it down and then I kind of manipulated it. I like to think of the ability to sculpt the paint a little bit. So you're going to want to add enough paint that you can actually maneuver it a little bit um, as you want, when you want. Um, yeah, did that answer your question? A little yes. bit, I know that's not, yes, you know, thank you. that's one simple example out of the hundreds and thousands of brush strokes that will go onto this painting. Um, but yeah, that, that's the fun part is everything's been very, um, I haven't put much paint on there. I've just kind of scumbled in a little bit of glazing in and I've kind of manipulated the colors a little bit, cooling and warming different areas. And, um, and now what I will do is start using paint. <laughs> and adding paint and, you know, whole areas will probably get covered that we can barely, you know, again, this green, I can let some of it show through, but I don't think it's really the green that I want in this painting any longer. And so I just need to get brave. And who knows, I may come in and add a whole like beautiful, thick, juicy paint up into the sky that really may feel like it's wrapping, you know, coming forward and wrapping over. So I will just have to see how it develops a little bit. Um, when we do get to the impressionist paintings, yeah, we're this is that's where our um, you know holding the brush like a baton and loading it up with some paint, and we're really gonna make a whole bunch of different marks. Maybe what I'll do is go ahead and post some of my Monet um, close-ups so that you guys can begin to uh, study them a little bit at your own convenience and. Um, and see if some of the brush mark brush strokes in there aren't couldn't be useful in some of your other areas of your painting. Um, yeah, again, you guys were awesome today. Um, I really appreciate you guys being understanding. Um, I would have understood if you weren't understanding as well, because that was rough, um, embarrassing. And uh, I'll definitely try to get that fixed up for next class and figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, any last questions, you guys, for today? I just want to say, first of all, thanks for rebounding so well and, and fixing the situation. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Thank I you. Agree. Yeah, and I would really appreciate the video as you finish this. That would be wonderful. Okie doke. Oh, I will plan on that then. Let me let uh, wipe these crazy leaves off. Actually, they look kind of cool in the in the screen, they don't look so bad. And in the painting, they're so much brighter, that's scary. Um, yeah, I definitely will. That'll be my goal. So let me go take care of my daughter, let this painting tack up for a little bit, and uh, we'll get back to painting, hopefully this afternoon, but I no promises. <laughs> Thank you. So, so our you assignment. Awesome. Thank you. You did a great job rebounding from that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're it welcome. was a little kept my panic inside. So our assignment is to glaze. Is that right? Your your assignment is to finish your painting. So whichever, if if you want it, glaze. Is yours still black and white? Yes, it is. So yeah, if you want to glaze, and then probably give that a day to dry, day or two, and then if. Yeah, so I'm just showing you different techniques that you can use for creating kind of, you know, the feeling of glow and light. Oh, man, that's so much lighter in there. Um, so anyways, yeah, and then let's start putting some warms and cools beside each other on there. Any questions? Before I make you see thick, walking around with my phone. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Go take care of your daughter. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Michael. <laughs>